Hello, friends. Welcome to Trivia Over Tea, the quiz show podcast where we drink tea and play trivia. I am your host, Matthew Cook, and I'm here virtually once again with our scorekeeper, Carter Sankey. Carter, how are you today? I'm great. Just excited to be here with some friends. Yes, um, we have we have two of our um, regular contestants, although we haven't had them on um, in a uh, um, in in a little bit. It's been it's been a few months. Um, before we get to them, though, I just want to mention that uh, about two weeks ago, we by we I mean I uh, created a page for trivia over tea on this website called buymeacoffee.com. And if you would, uh, if you feel like you have gained benefit to your life from this podcast over the last two plus years, and you want to give back to the wonderful people or person who has created this podcast and help out with some of the uh, expenses associated with creating a podcast and maybe help us grow it into the future, I would uh, kindly ask that you consider giving us five bucks. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you do, we will send you, of course, a sticker. And uh, thank you to those of us, to those of you who have already contributed. Um, your stickers will be are forthcoming. I just haven't had time to put them in the mail. So, anyway, that is my sales pitch. Buymeacoffee.com/slash/trivia over tea. So, there you go. Okay, sales pitch over. Now we will meet our contestants. Uh, you will remember our friend Alyssa. I am so happy to be back on after being banned from the podcast for so long. I'm um, not sure why. I'm swimming my spit because I forgot to bring tea. Um, and I'm, I'm, I don't know whose turn it is to win this time. Is it my turn or your turn? Cecilia and I have been alternating and I can't remember who won, but I'm excited to pass the baton or take the baton back today um if i'm i'm just glancing at the scores right now Alyssa, you won the last time well i can't wait to give the w over to cc today then okay well we'll see uh we'll see how it plays out but uh, thank you Alyssa, for being here of course and we also have cecilia hello um i am excited to be back once again um I feel like Alyssa and I always bring the excitement when we're on podcasts. So I hope that you find this episode entertaining and we're both just here to have a good time and hang out with our friends. Fantastic. Well, thank you for being here, uh, Cecilia, as always. Um, and as with all of our regular episodes, uh, we'll have four rounds of questions today, each with a slightly different format. And so without further ado, Carter will explain the rules for round one. Well, round one, as you might know, is our general knowledge round, where we each get five multiple choice questions. Questions here are worth 10 points each, so just guess the right answer, and you'll get those 10 points. All righty, Alyssa, you're up first. Are you ready? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Let's okay. Hear it. Question one. On March 29th, 2019, what artist released their debut studio album called When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? A, Lizzo, B, Billie Eilish, or C, Megan Thee Stallion? Um, B, Billie Eilish. That's correct. Um, it won her album of the year and best pop album at the 2020 Grammys. Question two. On March 25th, 2023, the Australian Labour Party successfully won the New South Wales local elections, giving, them con giving the Labour Party control of seven out of eight state governments in Australia. I should say seven out of eight state and territorial governments. Mason wrote this question. And he was not the one who went to Australia. I was anyway. That's beside the point. Seven out of eight state and territorial governments in Australia. Which state is the only one not controlled by the Lib the Labour Party? A. Queensland. B. Tasmania. Or C. Western Australia. Um, I'm gonna go with B. Tasmania because am, am I right? That is correct. Yes. Yeah, it is Tasmania. Okay. Uh, the Liberal Party. Isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, I thought it was. You know what? I'm not even going to say that. I I was going to give you my explanation, and I'm going to sound so stupid. And I'm just going to take this win. I thought it was in like an uninhabited island, and it just had the Tasmanian devils. And I was like, yeah, no one's controlling that. Why would anyone be controlling that? 
Well, it is an island. You can edit that out. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Tasmania is an <laughs> island. Down. Um, there are cities on the island. Um, I have been there. Um, oh. Yeah. It, well, the answer is Tasmania. Uh, the Liberal Party okay, is controlled. Moving on. Is as control of the Tasmanian Parliament. <laughs> uh, question three. Okay. This is uh, another Mason question. The Song of Hiawatha was a trilogy of cantatas published by what British composer? A. Edward Elgar. B. Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Or C. Rafe Vaughan Williams. Um, for the for the audio listeners, I just looked into the camera like Jim from the Office. Um, C. Uh, no, this was also beat uh, Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Oh, yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th this is this is a bit of a deep cut in terms of repertoire. Um, and yeah, <laughs> uh, frankly, the only reason that I know this particular piece uh, is because it appeared a lot in some research that I did while I was an undergrad. But that's beside the point. Question four: In December 1911, a group led by Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen became the first people to reach what location? A, the summit of Mount Everest, B, the source of the Amazon River, or C, the South Pole? Um, B. Uh, no, this one was C, uh, the South okay. Pole. Um, okay. They arrived uh, five weeks ahead of the ill-fated Terra Nova expedition led by British explorer Robert Falcon Scott. And finally, question five. In 1981, architect Maya Lin won a national competition to design which Washington, D.C. memorial? A, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, B, the Korean War Veterans Memorial, or C, the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial? What year was this? 1981. Um, I think A. That is correct. Uh, yeah. The iconic V-shaped memorial was completed in 1982 and sits on the north side of the National Mall near the Lincoln Memorial. Cecilia, are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. Okay. Question one. In 1974, farmers in the Shanxi province of China discovered what ancient site? A, the original section of the Great Wall of China, B, the first forbidden city, or C, the Terracotta Army? I'm going to go with C, the Terracotta Army. That is correct. It, uh, the Terracotta Army depicts the armies of Emperor Qin Shi Huang, which are meant to protect him in the afterlife. Question two. In the 1971 NHL draft, the Montreal Canadiens took Guy Lafleur first overall with a pick they got from what other team that was constantly at the bottom of the standings throughout its existence? A, the California Golden Seals, B, the Montreal Maroons, or C, the Vancouver Millionaires? You'll be not surprised to learn that Mason wrote this question. No, I was going to say, this is absolutely a Mason question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go with B. Uh, no, it was actually A, the California Golden Seals. In the franchise's nine seasons, they never had a winning record. I mean, that's not surprising, but that mm. one sounded the least like a real hockey team. I was like, why would you name something the Golden Seals? But then I think about the names of the NFL football teams, and I'm like, you know what? That tracks, though. So. Well, the Golden State, Golden Seals. But anyway, well, they they were not very good. So there you go. Question three. The 1792 assassination of King Gustav III of Sweden is depicted in what opera by Giuseppe Verdi? A, Otello, B, Un Ballo in Mascara, or C, Aida? I, I did write this question. Um, I was going to say, this is a hardball, Matthew. Yeah, but okay, so, so, so let, me, let me read you the three options again. Othello, or Othello, B, Un Balu in Mascara, or C, Aida. I'm going to go with A, but that's probably incorrect. Well, I was hoping that you would eliminate A because Othello, of course, is based on Othello, which is the Shakespearean play. Um, uh, 
but uh, it, the answer is actually B, un balouin mascara. Uh, censorship rules and the contemporary political situation in France in 1858 caused Verdi to shift the setting of the opera to colonial Boston, which he found extraordinarily frustrating. When the opera is performed today, the, its original Swedish setting is restored. So there you go. Question four. Yul Brenner performed the leading role in what Rodgers and Hammerstein musical 4,625 times? A, The Sound of Music, B, South Pacific, or C, The King and I? Is it B, South Pacific? Uh, no, it's actually The King and I, C. Uh, he played the King of Siam in the original Broadway production and in the 1956 film adaptation and many other productions of the musical. I'm going to be real honest. My musical theater knowledge is like next to zero. I know Into the Woods. And the only reason why I know the South Pacific is because like, I don't know. I don't remember why I know that, but I oh. didn't think it was the first one. So yeah, well, and and that's correct because there's, uh, well, Christopher Plummer played him, played uh, Captain Von Trapp in the film. I don't know who played him in the original Broadway production, but the the, the famous association is Yul Brenner with The King and I which, as I said, he played 4,625 times. So there you go. And finally, question five. During a speech at the 1996 Democratic National Convention, Vice President Al Gore demonstrated his version of what popular dance? A, the Macarena, B, the Cuban Shuffle, or C, the Cha-Cha Slide? I'm not making what, this up. What year was this? 1996. Macarena, Cuban Shuffle, Cha-Cha Slide. I'm going to say the Cha-Cha Slide. It was actually the Macarena. Oh, my um, God. Uh, he announced that he would like to demonstrate the Al Gore version of the Macarena, uh, then stood still for a few seconds before saying, would you like to see it again? And the crowd laughed. Does that even count? He didn't actually do the Macarena. Well, it, he said it, it was his version of the Macarena. He, I mean, he, and he said he stood still. So that was his version. I wonder why he didn't win the presidential um, nomination. Well, that was in 2000. In, That's fair. In, in 1996, he and Bill Clinton were reelected, to be fair. But I'm sure, that, I'm, I'm sure that his uh, Macarena, uh, his, his rendition of the Macarena um, weighed heavily on the minds of voters in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> so not that I remember the 2000 election because I was... But a wee toddler, as we all were. But uh, at any rate, that's the end of round one. Um, Carter, can you please give us a score update? Gladly. We have Alyssa at 20 and Cecilia at 10. Um, not to question your scorekeeping. I think Alyssa may have gotten three questions right. <gasps> she, she, got Bill, she got Billie Eilish. Why? Yeah. Whoa, whoa. And she got Tasmania. Wait, how, wait how, many, how, many, how many points were the questions? Five? They're ten, 10 points each. 10 points oh, okay, each. okay, never mind. I thought I thought you were taking away five points. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. No, I yeah. would never. Give me another ten. Give me. Yeah, because she she got Billie Eilish, Tasmania, uh -huh. and Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Oh, I was adjusting my spreadsheet, so let me. Okay. Let me fix. Yeah, yeah, wake up, got, Carter. No, no, wait. Now I gave Cecilia ten points. Oh shoot. <laughs> no, yeah, take those away. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, Carter, can you please give us the, the score? Gladly. We have Alyssa at 30 and Cecilia at 10. Okay. Now it is time for round two. So, Carter, can you please tell us the rules? Yes. In round two, you will each get the uh, same five questions or questions on the same topic. Questions here are worth 10 points each. No, they're worth 20 points each. And if you get one wrong, your opponent can answer for 10 points. I It's been a while, guys. Uh, yeah, a whole two weeks. Um, anyway... Uh, so for today's round two topic, uh, there was a birthday that I wanted to write questions uh, for our last episode uh, for, but I had a, a better topic for that particular episode. So I decided to save the famous birthday for the two of you. Um, I hope that you know something about President Andrew Jackson. Um, his birthday was March 15th, 1767. Um, he died June 8th, 1845. So you're both going to get five questions about Andrew Jackson. Um, Alyssa, are, uh, you're up first. Are you ready? Great. I, I was going to say I love Andrew Jackson, but 
as I have a history of saying that I love really problematic historical figures, I'm going to not do that today. Um, I would love he, to answer some questions about him. He is horribly problematic. He is so. horribly problematic. Yes. And I'm, 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 I'm already, you know, president of the fan club of Spiro Agnew. So I really don't need <laughs> anyone else on that. Yeah, let's hear it. All right, let's here talk we about go. Andrew Jackson. Question one. Jackson's exact birthplace is unclear. But he was born in the Waxhaw settlement, which is located, uh, which was located on the border between what two southern colonies? <laughs> this is going to be a bad episode. Um, um, Georgia and Florida. No, Cecilia. I'm going to guess Virginia and North Carolina just because so many presidents are from the state of Virginia. So we're we're just going to go with that by process of elimination and that I know nothing about Andrew Jackson besides the fact that he's horribly problematic. Well, um he was uh not uh from Virginia. He's one of the one of the ones who's not. Um you got one of them correct. Uh North Carolina and South Carolina. So I think we can give Cecilia 5 points um for that. Um, various evidence points to Jackson being born in a couple of different locations on either side of the state line. So we don't really know. Question two. What was Jackson's popular nickname, which refers to his strength and stubbornness in the War of 1812? Um, strength and stubbornness. Um, well, when I think of stubborn, I think of a donkey. So maybe, maybe like... Andrew Jack Gas Jack Jackson. Well, can um, I pass on the podcast? Well, well, so that it's it's interesting because um, yeah. that is one of his nicknames. Um, oh, yeah, it's I not. So the, I hear partial credit. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 wondering if maybe I should just like, give you full. I Credit. yeah give me full credit um you know i think this i'm just gonna no give you full credit for that because this yeah, is just there's one of... cecilia arguing for <laughs> points <laughs> yeah i think that's fine yeah 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 Yeah, he was called jackass i think so too um yeah um the the, the, the nickname we God. were looking for um was old hickory um yeah and, like and that better. one specifically referred to the war of 1812 but anyway oh. that was another they didn't, they didn't have donkeys in 1812 no, no, they, they, they did. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. And it may or may not come up in a future question. Anyway, question three. What political party was founded in 1828 to rally behind Jackson's bid for president? Um, what party was created? Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. Okay. Final answer. <laughs> uh, don't you want to choose a political party that you may know? Um, Republic. Uh, not the Republicans, Cecilia. <laughs> I'm just going to guess Democrats because that is correct. Alyssa... The, de the Democratic Party. Um, uh, fellow future president Martin Van Buren helped build the party. Um, its symbol is the donkey, which is in reference to Jackson's nickname, Jackass. So there you go. Question four. Um, Jacksonian policies regarding Native Americans led to the forced march of thousands of indigenous people known as the what? The Trail of Tears. That is correct. I, I've, never, I've never been so excited to say those words, and I'll never be those excited again. I, I hope not. Yeah. No. Um, uh, approximately I, i'm I'm not smiling over that i prom i'm just happy no, I, I got a point no i i, I understand yeah okay. we're <laughs> yes enough said uh approximately sixty thousand people from the what they called quote unquote the five civilized tribes which were the creek the cherokee the seminole uh the chickasaw and the choctaw were forced to move to the indian territory which is now the state of oklahoma and thousands literally died and route Question five. 
Jackson lost a highly contentious presidential election in 1824 to what sixth president whom he beat in the 1828 election? The sixth president? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, John, um, yeah, um, <laughs> Is it? Is it John? Um, John, John Adams. John Quincy Adams. Yes, John Quincy Adams. <laughs> oh my, I should play the lottery today. Okay. <laughs> yes, John Quincy wow. Adams, the son of no, I know. John Adams, John the second Adams. president. Mm -hmm. um, because no, neither candidate received the majority of the electoral <laughs> votes in the 1824 election, the House of Representatives voted to elect John Quincy Adams president in 1825 a move that Jackson regarded as a, quote, corrupt bargain. In the 1828 rematch, Jackson easily demolished Adams. So there you go. Cecilia, are you ready for your five questions about Andrew Jackson? Of course. Okay, question one. Jackson is considered the hero of what battle in the War of 1812, even though it was fought after the war had officially ended? To the Alamo. I know nothing about the World of War of 1812, clearly. Uh, not the Alamo. That was a little later. Um, Alyssa? No? No guess? Okay. No. Um, no guess. Uh, this is the, the battle. Don of... The Donkey War of 1812. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, this is the Battle of New Orleans. Uh, it was fought on January 8th, 1815. 15 days after the Treaty of Ghent was signed, ending the war between Great Britain and the United States. Question two. Jackson's plantation, the Hermitage, is located outside of what Tennessee city? Was it Knoxville? Not Knoxville. Alyssa? Tennessee. Um... Gatlinburg. No. Uh, Nashville. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yes, Nashville, Tennessee. Jackson owned the plantation from 1804 until his death in 1845. Its major cash crop was cotton, and at the time of Jackson's death, 110 enslaved people were living and working on the property. Question three. Toward the end of his presidency, Jackson was asked whether he had any regrets. He answered yes. I regret that I was unable to shoot Henry Clay or to hang John C. Calhoun, the latter of whom served in what position during Jackson's first term? So, John C. Calhoun, what position did he hold? Oh my God, why are you asking me these questions? Um, was he the Secretary of State? No. Alyssa? I don't know. I have no idea. I want to make a joke so bad right now, but I'm not going to. We'll we'll save it for the discussion after the show. I okay. think, I think you I know, know what, you're, what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think I know, I know, you know what you're what thinking, thinking. <laughs> but we should save that for the discussion even, after the show. I didn't even ask the question. <laughs> okay, I don't even. I didn't even remember the question. I'm laughing at my own joke. Um, you guys know. We know. Yeah, we know. We know. You had to be there. You had to be there, guys. Sorry. You really did. Um. Anyway, this was, uh, so John C. Calhoun uh, was the vice president, actually. Um, uh, Calhoun was also the vice president for John Quincy Adams, um, and he and Jackson became at odds over the nullification crisis, and Calhoun resigned in 1832. Henry Clay was the de facto leader of the Democrats' rival political party, the Whigs. So there you go. Question four. Jackson mentored many prominent Tennessean politicians, including what 11th president, who was so closely associated with Jackson that he was nicknamed Young Hickory? I clearly paid so much attention in American history in high school. 
It's fine. Um, this is somebody that I mention a lot on this show. I write a lot of trivia questions about this person. You you mentioned some, well, it's not Van Buren because you just said that Van Buren was part was like one of the. Moon I'll opponents. give you that. It's not Van Buren. Okay, thank you. Um, was it Andrew Johnson? Not Johnson. Um, not Andrew Johnson. Uh, Alyssa. I don't know. Okay. Uh, this is James K. Polk. Um, Polk took office in 1845, shortly before Jackson's death. There you go. And finally, question five. At Jackson's funeral, what pet proved to be a major disruption with the mourners being, quote, horrified and awed at its lack of reverence? If you just give me what type of animal it is. I'll give you credit. Oh my god. I want to say a donkey because that would because Jackson was such a jackass, but I feel like that's too much on the nose. I'll I'll, I'll give you that it's not it's not a donkey. Th Is it think a dog? about th think about popular pets and which what what popular pet might be disruptive. A dog? Not a dog. Alyssa. Give Cecilia another guess. Give her another guess. Okay, Cecilia. Um, uh, th think a little bit outside the box, but not too far outside of the box. I mean, uh, a bird? I don't know. Was it some kind of bird? What, what kind of bird? A parrot? A parrot, yes. Paul the parrot, P-O-L-L, -L, the parrot. Um, Reverend William Menifee Normand said, quote, before the sermon and while the crowd was gathering, a wicked parrot that was a household pet got excited and commenced swearing so loud and long as to disturb the people and had to be carried from the house. And this parrot was owned by Andrew Jackson. So there you go. That's the end of round two. Uh, so Carter, can you please give us a score update? Well, if my calculations are correct, we have Alyssa at 90 and Cecilia at 45. All righty, now it is time for round three. So Carter, can you please tell us the rules? Absolutely. So round three will be a lot like round two, but this time you'll get um, different questions on different topics. Questions here worth 30 points each. And if you go in wrong, your opponent can answer for 15 points. All righty. Alyssa, are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay, well, question let me, one. Let me hear them. What interstate highway is referred to as the Baltimore oh Beltway? Oh, God. I hate it when you do it near me. Would you rather me ask you questions about, uh, like, the freeways yeah, here in Southern because, California? Yeah, because I'm not going to know them anyway, and I just look like an idiot when it's something I try. <sighs> the Baltimore Beltway. Um, I don't know. 70? No, 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 it's not 70. I know it's not 70. Mm -hmm. 95, I-95. Uh, no, not I-95. Okay. Um, okay. Cecilia? I mean, is it 695? I-695. Yes. Yes. Um, it makes a 51 mile loop in Baltimore County and Anne Arundel County and Anne Arundel. Oh God. Ugh. It makes a, it makes a 51 mile loop in Baltimore County and Anne Arundel County, Maryland. I shouldn't have put all those A's in a row there. That was not good on my part. Anyway, 695. Question two. The Greek island of Kos, K-O-S, is often hypothesized as the place Europeans were first introduced to what variety of lettuce? Um, hmm. I don't know. Um, how would I know this, Matthew? Think about I can't the even grocery think of store. A, a kind of lettuce. 
okay well yeah what else what other lettuce would i be thinking of um romaine yes oh yeah. okay never mind yeah i, I just put two and two together yeah that, yeah that's clever yeah um, mason wrote that question and he did not provide me an explanation so we'll just have to trust that that's the case I get, yeah uh, romaine question romaine. three Actress Eva Longoria is perhaps best known for her role as Gabrielle Solis on what ABC television series? Um, Desperate Housewives. That's correct. Uh, the series ran yeah. from 2004 until 2012. Question four. On March 29, 1848, an ice jam caused what waterfall to stop flowing for as many as 40 hours? Niagara Falls. That's correct. Uh, some of the falls mm. periodically freeze up, but this was the only time in recorded history when all of the falls in that spot on the river were frozen over. And finally, question five. Frank Sinatra loaned $200,000 to what former vice president to help him pay back his taxes? Is this is Spiro Agnew? It is Spiro Agnew. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and actually, I wrote Gotta that. Get that it, in there. Yeah, because you were supposed to be on the, actually the first episode of 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 this calendar year, um, and then you were not present, um, and so I wasn't invited. No, you were. Why invited. are you acting like that's me? You were invited. We what? recorded it on my birthday. Oh, okay. Yeah, just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> Forgot about that one. Yeah, and so. Sorry. Um, our friend Julia Mahan Cousin ended up with this question, and I had to explain to her the significance of the of the uh, Spiro Agnew uh, trivia. But I yeah. thought that it was appropriate to to uh, uh, regift the question to you, um, whom I was originally going to give the question to. I appreciate rate. it. Yeah. Also, shout out Julia. Thank you for carrying the Spiro Agnew torch for us. Appreciate it. She's part of the club now. Whether she likes it or not. <laughs> the Spiro Agnew Club. The Spiro yeah. Agnew Club. Yeah. Very elite. <laughs> Very elite. Only only fans of this podcast will, will understand. Uh anyway, I'm I'm sure that Frank Sinatra would would buy us a cup of coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash trivia over tea in recognition yeah. of his good friend Spiro Agnew. Um, I bet he would. I bet. I bet if Spiro wasn't in such debt, he would probably buy you one too. We're we're giving him so much or, positive. Or he could press. buy you two. He could buy you two, like a like a like a friend of the podcast did. I'm <laughs> was still that you? For a sticker, but that's okay. Yeah, that was me. Okay, I didn't. Well, you 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 I donated anonymously. You you bought him anonymously. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Why would I? do that i've never done anything anonymously <laughs> <laughs> but no. that's so unlike hold on. me hold on hold on no 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 hold on because did I... you see the message yes i did see the message and i didn't know who it was it just I... said okay maybe i did do it anonymously it said this doesn't sound like something i would do it said someone bought you two cups of tea and it says tea for my fave T-centric trivia podcast hosts with the with the the heart hand emoji. Was that yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Who else would that be? Well, who I don't know because listen to this podcast. The, that uses the other that people, emoji? the other people who bought us tea. Oh, I probably shouldn't put that up to the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll cut that part out of the video. Anyway. Um. Okay. So. So. And and frankly, I can't believe I was not okay. Yeah. Well, now I know. And now I, if you if you text me your address, I will send you a sticker. Have I ever given you a sticker? I feel like I should have. No. Okay. No. Okay. Well, so, Cecilia, have you gotten a sticker? Absolutely not. Okay. Well, how uh, many times are we on this podcast and we haven't even gotten a sticker? Okay. <laughs> I, I admit that that might have been an oversight on my part. So both of you, please send yeah. me your addresses. And I will put that in the mail as soon as I can. Has Lucas gotten a sticker? Uh, Lucas, Likely. if you're listening out there, if you have not gotten a sticker, please text me with your new address <laughs> and I will mail you a sticker. 
Wow, you're really in sticker debt over here. <laughs> to, to be fair, I I literally have like over a thousand of them uh, here because <laughs> I have I have this roll. And you then know I how many a... I have? <laughs> <laughs> I also have <sighs> I also have this roll of stickers as well. So I have I have plenty. Um, you're over here using these stickers as like toilet paper, and where 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 is Cecilia and mine? Nothing. Friend, friend, or fo- we're like foes of the podcast. So I'm gonna start saying <laughs> enemy of the podcast. Foes of the podcast. Okay, I'll send you stickers. Uh, Carter, do you have to go? I have to go. I'm so sorry, friends. Okay. Um, good, good luck keeping score. I don't know if you'll be able to do it without me, but um, wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, you you question my my Google Sheets ability. Well, I, I believe that I can. Well, you're handle. making a lot of enemies of the podcast today. You've turned all three of us against you. All right. It was good wow. to see you. I will Bye see Carter. you. Bye, Bye, Carter. Bye, Carter. Okay. Now well. we can take the gloves off. Now now it's really time to fight. I'm just kidding. I'm just well, kidding, you're, viewers you're... at home. We love you. You're you're doing really well I think though. I like this. Probably. I know. I don't know what's going on. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Uh, we've we've completely gone off the rails, but that's okay. We haven't done that in a little no. while. Um, but that's to be expected when we have you on, as well. So. Yeah. Anyway, shall we get back to the to the trivia at hand? Um, I guess. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Cecilia, yeah. Cecilia, I believe it is your turn. Yes, I believe that that is correct. Okay. Uh, great. So, uh, question. I should get back to the questions. There we go. I, so now for our for our listeners at home, because Carter has left us, I am trying to do both. Um, re, I'm I'm trying to score keep and read the questions at the same time. So, um, this is this will be interesting. Okay, here we go. Question one. What interstate highway serves as a bypass route of Richmond, Virginia? You see, I should know this because I drive it like all the time. Um, Is it 610? No, not 610. Alyssa? Um, 70. <laughs> no. Uh, this is, uh, this is I-295. Um, it runs 53 miles between I-64 west of the city to I-95 south of the city. Question two. On March 12th, 2023, what actress won her first ever Academy Award for her supporting role in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once? Jamie Lee. Uh, what's her last name? But yes. Um. Okay. See, I don't know anything because I live under a rock, but I know who you're talking about. You can, but how, how do you know her, her first and middle names and not know her last name? Because I am a moron, clearly. Okay. Well, I'm on a first name basis, but I Apparently. know who you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, it's Jamie Lee Curtis. I'll, Curtis. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. Okay. Yes. Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, it was her first ever nomination as well. Can I, can I have, can I add a little bonus question for you, Matthew? Oh, sure. Do you know um, what, what famous actor that went to, to um, Brown um, is Jamie Lee Curtis's uh, godson? Jamie Lee Curtis's godson. This is, this is for this is for ten points. Yep. <laughs> well, I don't get points because I'm the host of the show. Well, you would if you got it right. Um. Wait. So you said famous actor who went to Brown. Mm-hmm. I should write for this show. This is a great question. I'm. I. I have invited you in the past to submit questions for this podcast. I want. Can I have my own? I want. I want to write for an entire podcast. I want to. I want to ghost write for you. Well, I mean, I, I would give you credit. You wouldn't be ghost writing. I. I would say today's okay. questions okay. are by. You're stalling. You're stalling. Answer the question. I, I. I don't know. It's Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, I would not have gotten that. 
I know she's married to Christopher Guest. She is, yeah. Yeah. And I know her father is Tony Jake, Curtis. Jake Jake Gyllenhaal's uh, godmother. So. Oh, well, there you go. Learn something. Put, put that in your trivia bank. Okay. You can ask the questions now. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, Cecilia, you're still up. Uh, question three. Frenere, Germinal, and Messidor were some of the months of the calendar introduced after what major political event in the late 1700s? The French Revolution. That is correct. The revolutionary calendar was designed to remove all royal and religious influences with 12 30-day months, each divided into three 10-day weeks. And the last five days of the year were the um, <clears throat> sans culottide. No, sorry. The last five days were sans culottide. That's it. Uh, which were nationwide holidays. And question four. What 2007 song by Rihanna featuring Jay-Z sat atop the Billboard Hot 100 for seven consecutive weeks and won Best Rap Sung Collaboration? at the Grammys. Run this town? No. Alyssa? Umbrella. Umbrella. Yes. Um, uh, the song was from Rihanna's album, Good Girl, Gone Bad. Yeah. Is is that other, the one you, you mentioned, Cecilia, is that also a collaboration between Rihanna and Jay-Z? Because we're like way out of my league here. I think it is. Alyssa, is it? I think so. Yeah, I believe so. But like okay. when I think of Umbrella, I don't think of Jay-Z. I just think of Rihanna. Yeah, I just think of Rihanna at all times. Facts. Uh, okay. I don't. Um, but uh, I, I had to okay. dig deep well. to get that to get that question. But the answer is Umbrella. Just Put like... some respect on Robin Fenty's name. Okay, Matthew. Sorry. <laughs> I'll just ask the questions. I won't editorialize. <laughs> Question five. We we provide the commentary. That's true. Okay? Yeah. I just, I, I'm just the robot who asks the questions. Question five. The Ross Ice Shelf, one of Antarctica's most famous areas, lies within the territory claimed by what oceanic nation whose city of Invercargill is directly north of the claim? Can you repeat that question? Yeah. The Ross Ice Shelf, one of Antarctica's most famous areas, lies within the territory claimed by what oceanic nation whose city of Invercargill is directly north of the claim? It's not Australia because Australia is its own thing. At least I don't think so. It, well, it's I, I'll I'll give you that it's not Australia. Ugh. What's what's the only other Oceania country? Well, I shouldn't say that. There are several. There are many. There are several Oceania countries, Matthew. Yeah, that was that was not a good quote by me. <laughs> um, but the, there's like one more like really big one. Is it New Zealand? Yes, it's New Zealand. Yes. Oh, I should put that in the score. Hang on. Oh, wait, did you get four right? No, Alyssa got four. Okay. Hang on. Put that there. La, da, la, 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 la. Okay. Now that is the end of round three. So I will ask myself to give a score update. Uh, and at the end of round three, we have Alyssa at 225 and Cecilia at 150. So still anybody's game. And now it is time for round four. And so, oh, I need to explain the rules. Um, will I be able to explain them without looking at the script, which I, which I don't have pulled up because I never do this. Uh, so round four, you each are going to get the same three questions. And we're going to ask you to make, somehow make note of your answers, either on a piece of paper or on your phone uh, notes app or however you want. And we will review the, reveal the answers at the same time. So, Alyssa, Cecilia, are you ready? Yes. Okay. 
Question one. Who starred as Elle Woods in the 2001 romantic comedy film, Legally Blonde? I tried to put one semi-current pop culture question in round four. That movie okay. is 20 years old, Matthew. I said semi-current. We were all alive. Alyssa, what is your answer? Uh, wait, are we supposed to reveal them at the same time? Well, I mean, yeah, but I, I usually call on you one by one. Oh, okay. It, well, it's Reese Witherspoon. Cecilia. Reese Witherspoon. That is correct. Uh, the film inspired numerous spinoffs and adaptations, including the 2007 Broadway musical. Question two. What 1959 comedy film starring Jack Lemmon and Marilyn Monroe about two musicians that, dis that disguise themselves as women to escape from the mafia was adapted into a musical that opened on Broadway last year? Okay, uh, Alyssa. What is your answer? Uh, some like it hot. Cecilia. Some like it hot. That is correct. Yes. Uh, I saw this musical when I was in New York City in December. That was my fun fact. And it was very good. A lot of fun. And finally, question three. In 1877, when the first telephone was, was installed in the telegraph room of the White House, what number would you call to reach the executive mansion? This is one of those either you know it or you don't. But think about the fact that there probably weren't that many phone numbers in 1877. How many numbers is that? Okay. Um, let's start with you, Cecilia. What is your answer? I'm just going to say 111 because I'm thinking of like what's easy to remember. But is it is it like an area code number? like, Or is it like a full like 10 digit number? Well, I'm I don't know. You have to tell context. me. That's I'm, I'm just I just asked the questions. I'm going to I'm not supposed me. to editorialize. So I'm just I'm I'm not going to give you anything. Oh, my God. I'll just go with my answer, which is one one one. Okay, Alyssa. Um, I guess one. <laughs> That's correct. It is one. Oh my god! I really should play the lottery tonight. Yeah, yeah you really should go like wow. buy yourself a lotto ticket. Something. It would not be until 1929 before there was a telephone installed at the desk in the in the Oval Office. But when the first phone was installed in the White House in 1877, its phone number was one. So that's the end of the game. Um, and uh, I will now give the final score. So uh, this is important because Alyssa has received, um, uh, or Alyssa got all three questions. Oh, shoot. Wait, I put that in the wrong column. Ha ha. Hang on. Uh, See, this is why I need Carter. Um, okay, I hope I've done this correctly. I think I've done this correctly. That looks better. Okay. Alyssa has gotten all three round three questions right, which is rare um, for anyone, not just... Which has Alyssa. never... Oh, well, I was going to say, I don't think that's ever happened between us. Well, no, I'm no. it's interrupting you. No, it's never happened between <laughs> the two of you. Um, it has happened in other matches, but not this one. Um, but anyway, that puts... Uh, that, that puts us at Alyssa, 345, Cecilia, 230. So, Alyssa, you have won uh, with a very spectacular score. Um, do you have anything that you would like to say? Um, I would like to thank my gracious host. Um, I'd like to recognize the great job that Carter does, clearly. Um, 
it's lacking now. And I'd like to say that if I make, um, if I make like top scores and we get into a bracket, I, w- I want Cecilia to be with me and we're going to do it as a team. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I will think about it. Allegedly, at some point in this calendar year, we will have a tournament because we have not had one in a very long time. Okay. Well, Cecilia and I are going to play as a team. Okay. Noted. <laughs> um, it can be me and Alyssa versus Lucas. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's an yeah. even match. Yeah, let's that's do that. That's an even match of great power. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. uh, the the Trivia Over Tea executive board will take that under advisement and we'll, we'll certainly think about it. Um, and we'll let you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like um, a yes to me. But uh, but that is a very good score, uh, nonetheless. Thank but you. Anyway, uh, that's that's the end of our uh, game today. Uh, thank you, Alyssa and Cecilia, for being on the show. Uh, thank you, Carter Zanke, for for scorekeeping most of the show today, um, and uh, truly. We have learned how indispensable he and the other scorekeepers are to this podcast because I clearly cannot do it all. Um, uh, and thank you also to Mason Cook for composing the music. Today's questions were written by Mason Cook and yours truly. And thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe to Trivia Over Tea on your preferred podcast platform and leave us a review if you enjoyed it. Uh, check out our Facebook and Instagram pages at Trivia Over Tea as well as our Twitter account also at Trivia Over Tea, and feel free to message us on any of these platforms if you have any comments or suggestions regarding the show. If you would like to send us a little bit of love and buy us a cup of coffee, please do so at buymeacoffee.com slash Trivia Over Tea. The link is in our Instagram bio. And tune in in two weeks when we'll have 30, no, two new contestants and 33 more fantastic questions. So thank you. We will see you in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs>